What's going on you guys? So in the last video in the grid life adventure, you've probably seen me talking about how I broke a control arm on this. So let's go through, talk about what happened, why it broke, and what I'm gonna do to fix it. Okay, for starters, what broke? When I changed the design on this control arm, there was one major issue that I completely overlooked. My fault. I'm not a suspension engineer. I do this shit like trial and error, so... Let's talk about what I changed and why that messed everything up. So, for starters, down here, this is where the original pickup was supposed to go for the radius rod. And the idea was... Let's see if I can kind of hold this up here somehow. So the original idea was that this radius rod will go from right here to about the center right here. The tie rod will go over the radius rod. Now an issue with that was since the tie rod was going over the radius rod, this tie rod angle in comparison to the control arm was on a very steep upward angle which causes a lot of bump steer. Like you could just push down on the car and watch the wheels tow in and out. It was really, really bad. So I decided, you know what? Let's put the radius rod over the tie rod. That way we can match the angle for the tie rod and the lower control arm, eliminating a lot of that bump steer. Great idea in theory. I made two major mistakes though. First of all, this joint should not be on a plane like this. It should be a flat plane like that because with it going this way, it can allow the control arm to rock back and forth. Now that'll cause all kinds of suspension angle changes and it's just, it was a really bad idea. I was hoping I could tighten it down enough to the point where it wouldn't be able to do that, but it still did. So that was mistake number two. That was, mis well, that was mistake number one. It's too early. Mistake number two, which was the mistake that caused everything to break is even worse. So I'm gonna pull this out real quick to show you guys what my other mistake was. And that's this. I had to move this in so far, since it's up higher to clear the tire, that I didn't, didn't take into consideration the actual suspension travel of this control arm. And watch this. This is about ride height. That's the control arm binding up on the subframe. So what happened basically is I was backing up in reverse, went full lock on it, and just the amount of shear load, since this is binding here, it puts so much load going out. God damn it. It's probably Tyler. I'll call him back. So the other mistake was that this puts so much shear load on here that it put a bunch of force outward on this heim joint right here and snapped this heim joint right in half. Which I welded back together. This is the control arm off of the passenger side, which is the side that broke. Now when that happened, it also broke the top of the coil over off, which Fortune Auto is back at Fortune Auto right now, and that is getting repaired. So we should be back on the road pretty quickly with that. Another thing I had to change is put a lower pickup on this tie rod on the knuckle just to give it a little bit more stability because I bent one of the bolts already. So we had to put a lower pickup on there. We're gonna put some more additional bracing on the back here too, just to make it a little bit stronger. And uh, after that, the knuckle should be good. So what am I doing to fix this? Well, I've already started on the passenger side that broke, and that is to make a one-piece control arm. So I completely redesigned it. Now it goes over the tie rod right there. I still need to weld this pickup on here for the sway bar, but you can see we did a single arm. We did like, I think this is a, like a 53 degree bend downward off here, picks up off there. So we're still in the center on this pickup. We're in the center on that pickup. 
We have full suspension travel on this now. No binding. Should be good. Now, something you might be thinking with this setup is how adjustable is it? Well, unfortunately, since it's all one arm now, in order to adjust caster and camber, you actually need to change the shimming in between the pickup points because say we pull some caster into it and we move this pickup in, when we move this pickup in, we're actually moving the whole arm forward since it's all one piece. So we need to change the shimming back here. And uh, you know, vice versa, when we adjust that, it changes the position of this and we need to change shimming there. So I do have a couple different size offset spacers for if I need to adjust it, but I did base the geometry and positioning of this setup off of where it was when we took it off the alignment rack. So it's basically sitting right where it was. Oh, I forgot I took the bolt off that tie rod. It's basically sitting right where it was after we took it off the alignment rack. Uh, just has a little bit less camber in it with this design because I did shorten the actual control arm. So I left a little more adjustment in the heim joints so I can bring camber in or push it out a little bit more if I need to. And if you're wondering how I got that to line up while having a broken control arm, how did I get it to line back up and put it in the same spot? Well, I'll show you kind of the uh, genius to my madness here of how I did that. So this side was completely fine, undamaged. All the pickups were right where they needed to be. And obviously I couldn't build a jig off of the broken one. So what I did is I built a chassis mount jig on the driver's side that's reversible. And basically what I did, super simple design here, two bars going from two spots on the chassis that have identical holes in them left to right. So basically this bar goes from here to here. This is where the center ball joint goes. And from up there to here and where they meet can only, that section where the bolt goes through, there's only one spot where they're actually gonna meet. So we know this is right where the ball joint's gonna go. And then on the other side, we just take these brackets off, flip them around and reverse them on the other side. And that's how we found our ball joint positioning. So super simple design in order to get it back together and working there. And then once both the control arms are completely finished, I'm going to build a proper jig for them. That way I can reproduce them if I ever have issues in the future. Or if this kit actually works really well and maybe I'll, you know, sling some control arms or something like that. But that's also really unlikely just because of the difficulty of modding the factory knuckles on these to make them work. So at least I'll have a jig that'll work with my setup for any future incidences that may happen. And all these Heim joints are heavy duty chromoly Heim joints with Teflon Kevlar liners in them. The only ones that are not are the tie rod and the sway bar. Those are just standard Heim joints because they don't take nearly as much load as the control arm ones do. But pretty much that's gonna be just about the finished product of it. Plenty of clearance there. Like I said before, I still gotta add steering stops on here. And I do still need to weld the sway bar pickup point onto the control arm. Anyways, I thought I'd give you guys a quick little update, just letting you know what happened, because I did see a couple people asking. I honestly didn't even really know the full in-depth of what was wrong and why the parts failed that did until I actually got it on the lift, tore it apart, and got to take a better look at it. But now that I understand where I made my mistakes, I can learn from those moving forward, and uh, you know, we just won't make that same mistake again. Okay, so it's the end of the day. I went ahead and I built the other control arm here. All fits pretty good, nice and tight. Plenty of clearance, full travel. I'll actually come over here to this side. Like I said before, I still do need to weld this rod on here. But, like you can see, this arm, this arm's got way more travel than it did before. So, much smoother travel too. No binding. Built a hell of a lot stronger, so that should work great. The only thing I need to finish now is 
I need to add the lower pickup on this tie rod here. I'm actually going to end up cutting this off of here and uh, straight uh, it, it bent. So I realized it bent. You can actually kind of see it. Uh, it curves a little bit up. So when everything got all wonky, it uh, did bend this a little bit. So I'm going to have to get that bent back down and then put a bottom brace in right there just to tie it together make it a little bit stronger and then uh, I think what I'm also going to do is weld on a steering stop in the back here Let's see if I can put my light up here so like up in the back of the control arm by the knuckle I'm probably gonna weld a steering stop up in there that way it'll uh, limit it a lot easier. So I don't know if I'm actually gonna put a steering stop on the actual control arm like I was talking about doing earlier. I might actually build the stop into the knuckle so that'll click, hit on the side of the control arm and uh, limit it. So, I mean, this is plenty of angle what we have right here. So it's probably actually gonna be about there when it's all said and done, which is plenty of angle I think I measured it earlier it's still at about 76 degrees steering angle with that setup right there and if you're wondering about Ackerman front is going to be limited around right there so Plenty of steering angle and should be a hell of a lot stronger than the old design. So fully locked out, you know, we're just barely scrubbing on that control arm. So we'll probably limit this to around there just to give us a little bit of leeway. And I mean, if I really wanted to, I could just run a narrower tire on this. Uh, there's absolutely no reason that I need to run a 265 on the front, but I am. And if I can make a 265 work on the front and get as much grip in the front as I can, the better. But, you know, if we need to, we can always go to a smaller wheel and tire in the front, like a 245. Uh, it's pretty common. A lot of guys do that just so they can get the angle. But if we can get the angle with a 265, I'd much rather do that. Anyways, you guys, that's going to be it for this one. You know, just kind of going through, showing you guys what broke, where my mistakes were, and, you know, trying to own them. So like the video if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you're new, follow the build along, and head on over to ShaneWhaleyRacing.com. We do have some merch up there still for sale. Uh, if I don't get any more sales anytime soon, I'm probably just going to shut the website down for now because it does cost me money each month to actually keep it up and running. But yeah, that's it. So until the next one, I'll catch you guys later.